text this morning from the NIV, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, 23 uh, through 31. It's on the screen. I'd like us to read this together as the musicians stay with us of the day. Let's read together. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, He took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let me hold that. Go back one second. I want you to see this. Go back to that same verse. It says, uh, whoever drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Keep going. Verse 28. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Verse 31. Father in heaven this morning, God, you know how human we are, and that even at a service like this, the meaning can slip away because we don't always remember the price that was paid to get to this table. And Father, this morning I am begging you that Father, somehow you've got to reintroduce what happened 2,000 years ago with the loss of your son that died on Calvary for us. And this morning, Holy Spirit, please Take us back there, from the known to the unknown. For our prayer is in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask Natalie, guys, if you all can just stay with me very softly during this teaching today, um, Luther. I was trying to figure out, through the Holy Spirit, how not to go through a communion service, and we miss what this is all about. I have a friend this morning that's going to help me teach this word today. I'm going to ask uh, that Vanessa Hannah will come uh, this morning, just a bit more, if you can. <laughs> Vanessa uh, comes out of Florence, uh, South Carolina, right down on the 95 uh, interstate. And Natalie, I understand that you have something almost, almost in common with the Father God. Natalie, so often we come to these services and we pass the emblems of the bread and we drink of the cup. And we can go through this service and we just do it. And I'm going to show the people in a little while how it is highly possible to go through this service and drink it and take it in an unworthy manner. But Natalie, uh, let me take them from the known now to the unknown. The known. And about a year ago, uh, you uh, had your son home on spring break from Oakwood University. Uh, Justin uh, is his name. Understand that it was one wonderful time with your son. Just in being in relationship with your son as his mother. What took place on that spring break? On that spring break, we Just talked. We shared about things that were going on in his life. We reflected about his dad, my husband, who had passed away in 2008. 
and we just did fun things together. We kind of hung out. We went to the gym. We went out to eat. So we went for a walk. So we did several things together. We even went shopping. We did several things together during that week. How did you enjoy that time with your son? I mean, you're, you and your son, close. How did you enjoy that time with him? It was very special. Um, he was an 18-year-old and wanted to kind of hang out with his mom, didn't mind it. He didn't mind if his friends knew. Um, he was my baby. He put his head on my shoulder. It didn't matter who was there or who wasn't there. It was a very special relationship. So, Vanessa, uh, he got back to Oakwood University, and I uh, understand that you all had developed not only this mother-son relationship uh, uh, in terms of just that familial bond, but something spiritual began to happen uh, that Justin was calling home, and he, he made a suggestion. What was that? Well, actually, in February, he sent me a text message. He was a big texter. And so he sent me a text message asking if we could start praying together. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this was, that was wonderful. Of course, I sent him a text back and said, yes, we can definitely start praying together. And then I asked him also, can we also share some readings? And he said, yes, we could share readings as well. So you and your son were, he's in Huntsville, you were in Florence, and your kid, your yes, son. Yes. Um, who you love, mm -hmm. uh, you were enjoying these spiritual times as you prayed together, you were in the Word together. Yes. And then, about a year ago, one morning, you had a, a, a wonderful conversation uh, with your son about a year ago. I, How was that conversation? I did. It was March 23rd last year. And he was calling home to ask for money. And I was explaining to him why I couldn't send the money that time. I said, Justin, you know, I always say yes, but this time I, I'll have to say no. And I explained why. And he didn't argue with me. He didn't exchange words. He said, I said, but I love you, Justin. And, and he said, I love you too, Mommy. And that was actually our last conversation. Well, um, you later that day, um, you got a phone call from another son right? Yes. in Huntsville. Right. And what did he say? Well, Donovan called to tell me that there was an accident. And he, didn't have, he didn't have all of the details of the accident, but said that Justin had been taken to the hospital. I understand that you were trying your best to get a flight out of Florence and get over to Huntsville. And of course, it was not going to work coming out of Florence. So you're going to get here to Atlanta uh, and then your sister and brother-in-law are going to get you over to Atlanta. But as you were walking out the house, my understanding that your pastor called you back into the house. And at that time, you learned what? I learned Justin had passed away. In a drowning. Yeah, yes, accidental drowning. Vanessa, um, I want you to talk a bit about over this last year, what does it feel like? And, I, and, and this is so deep, and, and, and even as I ask the question, there's a depth to this, as you know. To lose a kid, to lose a son, 99% of us in this have never lost a child. God forbid it would ever happen. But this last year has been horrendous for you. What does it feel like to lose a son? It's intense. Um, words cannot even express. It's emotional pain. It's, it's physical pain. Um, it is, it's, it's so deep I can't even put it into words. I try to explain it to people. Someone has asked me, a young person asked me, what does it feel like? And I said, it feels like pain. Sometimes it felt like there was sharp needles in my heart, chest area. It's, it's, it's extremely intense. It's, and it's like no other loss. I lost my husband in 2008, and that was intense, but it was, it doesn't even compare really to the loss of a child. Someone you've carried and nurtured with for nine months and over the years, it's, it's deep. It's deep. It's deep. You know, Vanessa, um, as I was saying to you, that we take communion all the time. And when you're 2,000 years away, and none of us are 2,000 years old, nowhere near it, 
But when you're so far away from something that just seems historical, I don't think we really understand what it, obviously what it means to lose a son. And of course, the Father God lost his own son. He really did. What has God been teaching you this past year about loss? Loss. What has it been teaching you? Difficult lessons. Um, loss is intense. And there were times when I felt loss myself and alone to a certain degree. And there was different feelings of anger and, and uh, intense pain. But through it all, God has taught me that in spite of what's going on, that he is still there with me, that he will see me through. He has brought me to a place where I didn't think I could be, where I could honestly say, I thank you, God, for the time that I did have with Justin. I wish I had more, but I'm thankful for the time that I had because like someone else shared with me, some, there are some parents who never have the type of relationship that we had. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm extremely grateful. And I, it's taught me to trust, I, I, I continue to trust him in spite of it all. Amen. Thanks, Vanessa. I appreciate it. Okay. I was reading in the Word yesterday. Listen to this. It says, um, verse 27, So then, whoever, everyone say whoever, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. This is not saying that you that you have sin in your life, your personal table will sin. That's what this is talking about. What this is saying, choir, balcony, that if you come to this table and you don't discern the meaning of these emblems, that you don't, you don't really dig down and, and, and really grasp the extent of the pain and the sacrifice of what this is all about, then God says that you drink this cup and you take this bread in an unworthy manner. You have to remember, everybody, that, that 2,000 years ago, this was not something that just happened. You got the Father God who's in heaven and his heart is breaking because his son is about to go to Calvary and to die there. He watches as Pilate has his son just, just beaten uh, under the, uh, the push and the pressure of the Jews. They place this crown of thorn on his head. And, and, and if you've never had your kid to go through pain, then you will not understand the depth of the pain even multiplied that the Father God went through. And can you imagine as the Father in heaven and you got people who are going to approach the table and they're going to say, okay, here's a cracker, here's some juice, let me get this over and get out of church. You have people today who, who have come to the place, not in this church a lot, and I've been in churches of where there are people who stay at home on communion Sabbath. They say, well, I don't want to go today. It's going to be a, a little long. Can you imagine God? who is saying as often as you drink this juice and you take this, uh, take this bread, you remember what my son did on Calvary. This morning, everybody, in just about five minutes, we are going to take this bread. We're going to drink this juice. But if you don't grasp the depth of the meaning of this, of the sacrifice and the ache and the pain that it took for the Lord Jesus Christ to allow himself to be sacrificed on the cross so that we can have eternal life. Listen to me, everybody. None of us will get to heaven. None of us could have got to heaven unless he died on the cross. In other words, uh, the word of God says, uh, even our faith is in vain. If Jesus did not die and he was resurrected from that grave, 
This morning, let me ask a simple question to take a poll. How do you begin to halfway understand that what happened on that cross just didn't happen? This was all about love. How many of you understand that? Now, Vanessa this morning, look at me, everybody. Vanessa, out of all the, the, the depth of, of losing a son, here's the Father God saying, I didn't lose a son through accident, however painful that is. He lost a son through murder. And he willingly said, go ahead, do what you got to do. Because it's worth it if I can get everyone in this church and those of our members, the cause of the storms, who are watching uh, by internet this morning. God says it's all worth it if I can get y'all saved. I was thinking the other day, I was thinking, I said, God, what would it mean? How would I feel to, God forbid, to lose my, my son? That would, as Vanessa, that would tear me apart. Just the thought of that. I said, like, yet the father had to sit back and watch the nails being placed in his son's hand. The father had to sit back and watch his son um, go through just the the ick, uh, just the, the disrespect and, and the hurt that he experienced. And the father, the Bible says, even turned because of looking at that, couldn't even see it. This is my son. And this morning, everybody, we're about to approach this table. And when you receive this bread today, I want you to just to, to look at it today. This represents the broken body of Jesus for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's for you. And then when you take the juice this morning, it represents the blood of Jesus Christ. It really does. And, and understanding that it was shed for you and me. Now, the, the difficulty I have this morning is that I'm this human being. I'm trying to tell you exactly what this means, but it's got to be the Holy Spirit that's going to put it into your spirit this morning that, Jesus, you did this all for me. Would you bow your heads?